Brilliant. This is my new developed report. I can see the specific job basic roles. I can see role members and I can see the assigned groups to my role. This is good enough for me now. Yes, you can spend many more hours in layout and uh, to place the stuff a little bit nicer than I did here. And yes, of course, there are much more features in the complete report engine. In Identity Manager, we use a specific report control that comes from a company called Stimulsoft. If you like to know a little bit more about these controls, you can go to the web page of Stimulsoft, which is www.stimulsoft.com. And there you can get the manual uh, where all of these controls, especially the properties you can see here on the right side, are described. There will be a couple of more advanced videos later on so that you can get aware of some more advanced features, for example, like dynamical data graphics and something like that. But at present, this it's good now. You have seen all the basic steps to create a report. And the last thing that is missing is now to make this report available in Manager. And to do that, I need my designer. And in designer, the first thing I need, it's the user interface section. Here we are. In the user interface section, there is something that is called object definitions. And this is the first thing to discuss. The reason for this is the following. What I like to do is I want to make this report in the manager away level. And I want to do that here for this job basic role structure. Here, a specific task should exist and this specific task should allow me to open this specific report. If I click on another one, for example, on functions, I don't want to see that. And if I click on organizations, I don't want to see that either. So it is easy to do that in a way that it is not displayed for organizations. Please remember organizations are as well stored in base like the roles are. But um, it is hard to make it possible to show it not on functions here because functions and job basic roles are both role classes and these role classes are orgs from a data perspective. You remember the table org contains all the roles. And to be honest, table org, it's not a table, it's a view on base tree, but this is our data object we like to use. What I now have to do in order to allow only to show the report for job basic roles, I have to define a specific data object, which is only valid for job basic roles. And to do that in designer, like started with, um, I can create here a new object definition which allow me exactly this thing. For example, if you look at the screen, you can see here ACC product knows about three of these object definitions. One for service items, one for special service items, and one for standard service items, whatever this is at the end. The same for ACC product group, which is our catalog structure and so on. I create a new one and this new one here gets first an icon. As icon, I use a structure icon. Here we are. The next thing is I need a table. The table I want to separate here or the table that is my starting point to separate something, it's the org root. Remember each role tree does have a role class and this is stored in org root. So I use the org root as table. The next thing I have to define, it's the condition. The condition is very important because the condition tells me at the end, this is the subset of data to display. So I didn't org root is equal to the name of my role structure and to be sure that everything is correctly written i just switch to the manager go to the role classes here i take the role class i'm interested in and i take the name of the specific role class for all the people who don't know why i'm doing that this is ident org root this is the, the value i like to use and here i'm back at designers and with one click, there are the job basic roles. Perfect. I need a display name. Brilliant. I take the same. And now I have to add some more information. For example, I need a form caption. So, you know, customizing stuff starts with CCC. Then I can use here the same. Only thing I have to ensure is that no spaces are dividing my string here. And I can use that as a form caption and I can use that as a list caption and I can use that as an object name. Perfect. 
So all defaults are filled. Defaults are the ones here with that blue rectangle in front. Brilliant. And with that, I can now store this specific object definition. Therefore, I get an error message. And this error message tells me that I have to fill as well a specific script, which is here a selection script. And unfortunately, this means I forgot one of these mandatory fields. So back to my script here. Where is this field I forgot? And here it is, selection script. Unfortunately, not a mandatory field, but it is something I have to fill out. That was what the error message was telling me. So I step into that. And what this selection script is doing, it is exactly using the whole thing I defined for my condition as a vb.net snippet. So in order to write everything correct, I close that again. I step here into my condition. Here we are. I copy the whole thing and go back to the script. And in the script, I have now to write the same thing in, which is stands here in SQL. So value equals, this is what we always do. Then the column name, ident org root, it's now to mask with the help of dollars, remember. An equal, it's a good idea. And unfortunately, in VB, we need double quotes instead of single quotes. Now, this is the same in VB.net that was there for before in SQL. Store the whole thing, switch the focus, and now you can save it. Brilliant. The next thing is to commit the whole thing to the database. Here we are. We need a change label for that. Please remember, each feature gets a new change label and pin. And now we can continue because we want to use this created job definition in the next second. We have to ensure that we compile the database first. The reason for that is we added the selection script. Please remember the selection script that was mandatory here to store that record. The selection script needs because it is vb.net compiled. So after committing to the database, the next step is to say compile the database. And this time we will compile only these definitions. Our system tells me templates and methods. We don't need to compile processes from my perspective. So I uncheck processes and the rest, it's okay. So the next thing to do is to create now a specific form that will show our report later on. And therefore exists in the identity manager a standard definition, which could be used for reports. Therefore, I have to step to the form section in identity manager because the whole thing, it's a form. And then I click on edit forms, which opens up a form editor. And in this form editor, I'm searching for a generic report view. So I'm searching for VI report. If you don't know exactly how the name is, and then you will search for report or we'll go, you will go down the list until you find something that looks like that. Here we are. This is my generic report viewer. And what I need here now, it's a new definition exactly and just for my job title reports. So I insert a new one. And now I need a name, which is not CCC report. So the form definition is VI report. This is cool. I need a display name so I can describe the whole thing. That is sometimes nice to see something. So, so that's good enough. And the icon, I need an icon as well. That is the icon I will then see in the task list. That should be a report icon because we want to show in report. And the last thing, it's the sort order. I don't want to show that in the first place. So I add a sort order of 10. I'm nearly sure there are not more than 10 tasks in the list. So 10 will be shown on at the bottom. And last but not least, I have to define a little bit in XML structure. And this XML structure will uh, then allow me to define the report I want to show. Herefore, I take just the, the template so that I get the main part of the XML structure. And here I need now the name of the report specified. So the correct report could at the end be shown. Therefore, I should better step back into my report editor because now I should take exactly the name of the report. I step into my report definition. And here I can see the name of my report. And this is the one I like to use. Okay. And I add that into the XML. 
Now my report is specified as well. Three things left in this position. The first thing is I have to assign the complete report to a program, which means a piece of software, which is the manager. This is where I like to show the report. The next thing is I have to assign the whole thing to a permission group, because if I don't have permission somewhere, I'm not able to see the report. I will assign that to CCC, Dialog and Schema extensions. And I have to assign this time as well an object because I created a specific object for that. And remember, this was an org root object. Find that easier. Control F again. Here we are. And now we need to drop basic role structures. This is exactly the one we like to see. And as we all know, to get the whole thing working, we have to commit our changes to the database. Job title roles, perfect report. It's now stored. Last but not least, it is nice to see the report in manager and I want to see that as well. So I step back into my manager and before I wait five minutes until the whole thing comes true, I just create a new connection and reload my manager dialog. Here the system tells me there is something to compile. So perfect. Knowing that I compile my system first again in designer compile database. And here we are. And then back in manager, the same again, database, new connection. You can see no compile message anymore. And now I try to test the whole thing. So I go to organization. Oh, that's the wrong one to business roles. And there I select job basic roles. And of course, here is my report task. Brilliant. I click on that. Here is my report. It's now part of the manager. We can see it here on job basic roles. If I click on functions, there is no such report definition, which now says this is correctly configured. And with that, I like to end this lecture.